Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. It's part of our Countdown to 2025 series, one integral every single day. And this one is spicy, spicy, spicy. So get ready. If you want to hint, the first thing I did was a U sub, and then I had to complete the square in the denominator and break this thing down into a couple integrals. Not a technique that should be unfamiliar if you've worked through all the integral of the days that I've done before, but it's not something that comes up too often. So on that note, let's just jump right in. So if you notice in the numerator, you can factor out an e to the x, and then you have two e to the x minus one over, and let's just leave the denominator as is, 3e to the 2x minus 6e to the x minus 1 dx. So if I go ahead and let u equal e to the x, then du is e to the x dx. And that's perfect, right? Because here's e to the x dx, that'll be du. And then everything else I can rewrite in terms of u pretty easily. So now we have integral 2u minus 1 over square root three. Now remember, e to the two x right here, that's e to the x squared. So that would be three u squared minus six u minus one du. Good? Okay, now I'm looking, since I have three u squared minus six u minus one in the denominator, I'm gonna try to complete the square down here. But first, and we just did this recently, I'm gonna factor out the constant three from everybody since it's easier to complete the square when the coefficient on my quadratic term is just a one, okay? So if I factor out a three, I'm gonna have u squared minus two u minus one third, all underneath the radical. And then I'm actually just gonna pull out that three in the front, but really it's a square root of three. So we have one over rad three times the integral two u minus one over square root u squared minus two u minus one third du. Very nice. Okay, now let's work on completing the square underneath the radical. So in order for u squared minus two u to be a perfect square trinomial, I would need plus one. So then let me go ahead and subtract one, and don't forget there's a minus one third hanging out. So then now this all becomes u minus one quantity squared, and then I have minus four thirds. Perfect. So let's put that back in. So one over rad three integral, two u minus one over square root u minus one quantity squared minus four thirds du. Okay, now from here, I'm gonna split this into two integrals. Why am I doing that? Well, notice this, um, this expression underneath the radical is a quadratic expression, quadratic function of u. And the numerator, I have a linear function of u. So I can use a substitution just to work on the part of the numerator, but it's not gonna fall into place perfectly because of this constant. I'm gonna have to do a trig sub most likely. So I'm gonna split this guy into two integrals and I'll put the one over rad three back later. We'll work on integral one, which is two u over square root u minus one squared minus four thirds du. And then integral number two for now, I say for now, cause it's gonna change in just a hot second. You'll see why, is negative one, the constant, over square root u minus one squared minus four thirds du. And then at the very end, when I finish these guys up, I'll put the one over rad three back, okay? That's horribly crooked, please forgive me. Okay, so focusing on integral number one, I would make another substitution, right? And let's just use, let's see, t, sounds good. Let t be everything under the radical, u minus one squared minus four thirds. Then if I take the derivative dt, that would be two times u minus one, derivative of the constant would be zero, du. Do I have that? Not quite. So dt is two u minus two du, and I don't exactly have that. I have two u sitting in my numerator, but no minus two. 
So we're going to come along and fix it. You go, I'm going to subtract 2, but then I also need to add 2, right? But I'm going to add 2 to the other integral right here. Why am I doing that? Well, I don't want to mess with this beautiful, beautiful substitution that I'm working out here. I want to keep the numerator exactly 2u minus 2. And then to add 2, it's going to fall into place perfectly with this integral because this is the one where I was going to do the trig sub and keep just the constants in the numerator and then work the trig sub out because of the denominator. Do you see how that's all going to fall into place beautifully? Okay, so this is something I've done before. That's why I kind of knew how to do it. You split them up at this step, the variable over the radical with the variable squared. You know you're gonna use sub. You know you're gonna have to adjust. So then you just kind of put it on hold, put that constant in the second integral and then play around with it so that the u sub works out, okay? Good. So then now actually this first integral is super straightforward because this numerator, 2u minus 2du, that's just dt. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, so we've got dt over square root of t, right? That whole mess, we said let that be t. Look at us go. So then, if you want to rewrite it, this is integral t to the negative one-half dt, right? Fabulous. Take antiderivative, so add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. It's 2t to the one-half. I'm going to say plus c1, and then this becomes 2, what was t? Where was he? Uh-huh, u minus 1 squared minus 4 thirds. And that's all raised to the 1 half. So let me just put a radical here. u minus 1 squared minus 4 thirds plus c1. And then let me just multiply it out how it was in the integral before we completed the square. 2 times the square root u squared minus 2u minus 1 third plus c1. I'll sub back u at the very end when I do both of them, okay? Don't worry, I didn't forget. Don't you fret. Okay, integral number one is done. That was not bad. Now, integral number two, really it's positive one over all this stuff, yes? Okay, let me work on it down here. So integral number two, is positive one, and I haven't forgotten, there's a one over rad three sitting outside all of this. Square root u minus one squared minus four thirds du. Now, when you have the variable quantity squared minus the constant, that's when you use secant theta for your trig sub. Some people like to do another substitution before they do the trig sub. I'm, I'm comfortable just going for it, so it's really up to you. Just let that entire variable quantity, in this case u minus 1, be the square root of that constant. So that would be 2 over rad 3 secant theta. Ooh, a little gross, but it's okay. So then differentiating both sides, du would be 2 over rad 3 secant theta tan theta d theta. Whew, okay. So here we go. Let's rewrite this integral now in terms of theta. So this du is all of this, 2 over rad 3 secant theta tan theta, 2 over rad 3 secant theta tan theta d theta, over, and then I have square root. So u minus 1 squared is 2 over rad 3 secant theta quantity squared, so it's going to be 4 thirds secant squared theta. 4 thirds secant squared theta minus that 4 thirds that's sitting there. Beautiful. Okay, let's clean up under the radical so I can take out a 4 thirds. And then we have secant squared theta minus 1. Let's simplify since that's all underneath the radical. If I take the square root of 4 thirds, it's 2 over rad 3. Secant squared theta minus 1 is tan squared theta. If I take the square root of tan squared theta, technically it's absolute value tan theta, but we don't need to worry about the absolute value because we restrict theta when we trig sub. So that's our denominator. And then we still have 2 over rad 3 secant theta tan theta d theta up top. Okay, perfect. 2 over rad 3 cancels. I never liked it anyways. We're not sad to see it go. And then tan theta is gone. And then I just have lovely little integral secant theta d 
empty theta. This is one you should memorize because deriving this antiderivative is not very intuitive. So ln absolute value secant theta plus tan theta plus, I'll say C2, okay? And then now to get out of theta land and to go back to use, we need to draw a triangle. So look over here, there was my substitution. We let u minus one equal two over rad three secant theta. So let's see, shall I copy it? Yeah, let me do that. Do, do, do. Come on down here. Okay, so rad three times u minus one over two is secant theta. And then here's my triangle. So secant theta is the ratio of the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So here's my hypotenuse, rad three, u minus one. Here's the adjacent side, here's theta. And then using the Pythagorean theorem, I could figure out what the missing side is. So this side here is gonna be the square root of the hypotenuse squared, so three times u minus one squared minus the adjacent side squared, which is four. Okay, yeah. All right, so putting this all together, now we have natural log absolute value. Secant theta is rad three times u minus one over two plus tangent theta is ratio of opposite side, which is right here, over the adjacent side. So then we have square root three times u minus one squared minus four over two plus C two. And then this next thing I'm gonna do is something that happens commonly with logarithms. When you have more than one term inside the argument and they have the same denominator and it's just a constant, you use your properties of logs to simplify. So I could write this as log of rad three u minus one plus radical. Straighten up now. Let me multiply this out, right? Because it would be three u squared minus six u plus three minus four, so minus one, right? And then this is all over two plus c two. But then this is really ln absolute value rad three times u minus one plus radical three u squared minus six u minus one. Watch this, watch this, minus natural log of two plus c two, right? Because when you have natural log a divided by b, that's ln of a minus ln of b. So this is b, here it is. And then ln of 2 is nothing more than a constant that can get absorbed with this plus C2. I just have to rename it. So now it's ln absolute value rad 3 times u minus 1 plus square root 3u squared minus 6u minus 1 plus C3. And then say where C3 is C2 minus natural log of two, okay? You have to keep track of your constants, especially later on if you guys ever take differential equations. When you're renaming them or they get absorbed or different things happen to them, you have to keep track. So I always teach my Calc 2 students to be very like careful and tedious and meticulous and precise, right? When working through these problems, that way they don't have to unlearn bad habits when they get to differential equations. All right, I think that's it, right? That's the second one. So let's put everybody all together and then we can go back to the original variable. Oh yeah, so all together now. We have one over rad three. We didn't forget that that was sitting there. And then result from first integral was two square root u squared minus two u minus one third. And then now I have plus this guy, natural log absolute value, rad three times u minus one plus square root. That looks terrible, hold on. Square root three u squared minus six u minus one. I need to close that up, hold on. 
got too excited. Close up the absolute value, then close up the bracket for the one over rad three plus C. Oh, who's C? Where C equals C one plus C three, technically times one over rad three, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There we go. All right, and then we can go back to our original variable now. We certainly can. So remember, we had originally let u be e to the x back in the day. And then I'm also going to distribute the 1 over rad 3. So we've got 2 over rad 3 times the square root. u squared would be e to the 2x minus 2 e to the x minus 1 third plus 1 over rad 3 natural log absolute value rad 3 times e to the x minus 1 plus radical 3e to the 2x minus 6e to the x minus 1 plus c. Hmm. Let's see. Anything else we can do? I don't think we need the absolute value bars, right? Because e to the x minus 1, that shouldn't ever be smaller than this quantity. But if you're just nervous, just leave them, whatever. Um, anything else we could do to clean up? I guess we could, you know, here's a rad 3. I could factor out a rad 3 from everybody, but then that would make this a fraction. I'm just saying if, if we factored out rad 3, then I could put that also in the constant, but I'm not thinking it's going to look better. If you want to get a common denominator here, then that would just be 2 thirds, and then I would have no frac. We could do that. Why don't we do that? You're like, Professor B, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. I'll show you right now, just so they match. So 2 over rad 3. Then let me get a common denominator, okay? So this is over 3. I'm going to multiply everybody here by 3. So 3e to the 2x minus 6e to the x minus 1 over 3 plus the rest of the stuff. And then you see how really I could break up the radical. And then this is rad the numerator over rad 3. Rad 3 times rad 3 is just 3. This will look better. Then you have 2 thirds radical 3e to the 2x minus 6e to the x minus 1. Okay, that's kind of cute. And then I would leave the, you know what, let's just leave the rest as is. I wouldn't try to factor out the rad 3 because you see how this expression under the radical matches this one? Then we're, then we're kind of like sticking to a theme with our answer. Yeah. There's so much going on with how you, you know, choose to simplify, but hopefully you appreciate. I'm trying to keep the theme going of this 3e to the 2x minus 6e to the x minus 1. And I'll, we'll just stop there and we'll leave the absolute value. That way we're not having to think too hard about it, but I think you can dump them. Okay. How did you like that one? That was crazy, right? That was crazy. I've done a few like that before where you have to complete the square in the denominator split it up, do a U sub for one, a trig sub for the other, but I don't think I've done it where first there was this E to the X that we had to U sub out, you know? This was just off the charts. Doable though, doable. And maybe some ugly constants that always, you know, kind of throws a wrench in your flow, but here we are prevailing. Look at us, little integration machines. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Tell me how long did this one take you? <laughs> How are you guys enjoying this series? I'll lighten it up tomorrow if you want, because, you know, it'll be the weekend. We should just be relaxing anyhow. That's all for now. I will be back tomorrow with another integral of the day counting down to 2025. Are you guys excited for the new year? I, I really am. I made a little 2024 recap video. I put it on YouTube shorts and it's also on my Instagram and TikTok. So if you're not following me there, be sure to math with Professor V. I love you guys so much. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye.